Costo. Hello, Marty. Good, good afternoon. I've just been giving you the big intro, mate. I gave you the drum roll. I gave you the intro. I said Costo's got a one-line assessment for all 17 teams, mate. I mean, this is glorious, mate. This is, I've been looking forward to this for the whole show. And you'd better say something nice about our Warriors. <laughs> stay, you better stay on the line. Hold your breath. You might end up in the decompression unit. Yeah. <laughs> all right, then. We're a week away, mate. Now... I'm going to run them down from the top. So I'm just clicked onto nrl.com here, and and this is this well, you can jump you can jump around however you want. You can go at last season's ladder, but you probably want to leave the Warriors to last. But you know, go your hardest. Yeah, I might leave the Warriors to last, but the way that they they haven't done it in alphabetical order, I don't know why they've done it like this. But the first team at the top. So what Jason is going to do, Costa's going to do, ladies and gentlemen, for us is he has got a one line assessment on every single team. One to seventeen, and we'll leave the Warriors to last because we want to we want to talk about that Daily Telegraph poll or whatever the yeah. article was as well. Broncos. And to we're going to make this, and we're going to make this up. This is not scripted. This is not scripted. No. You know, I've got an idea where they finish. That's about it. Broncos to start with. Well, I think the Broncos will be better with uh, people like Carrigan going off to World Cup and whatnot. But just on today, before we went to air, Herbie Farnworth agreeing to leave the club at the end of this year to go to the Dolphins. I don't think they've got the firepower to make the eight. I'm going to tip Brisbane to finish just outside in ninth position. Like they were last year. Okay, so if you don't actually decide or you don't give us the tip on the eight, I'll ask you that at the end. Broncos, you're out of the eight. Raiders. The Raiders trial form was abysmal and the Canberra uh, management, uh, the coaching staff know that. There's some issues there. Rapana uh, has again been rubbed out because of foul play in the trials. He's got a dilemma at fullback. No one seems to know what Ricky's doing in the number one jumper for round one next week. I don't think they're going anywhere. I think they're going in reverse the green machine. As I said, trial form average, that's being nice. I think Canberra will finish in 11th position. 11th for the Raiders. 11th. Correct. All right. Matt Gunn's doggies, 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 doggies. Now, they've, they've, they have acquired Costo, they have acquired players, and they've been rubbish for years. At some stage, it's got to turn around. Well, I think they've got the best rookie coach coming in in Sereldo. So all of term, in terms of the, the new people that we've seen come into coaching for first year, I think Sereldo will do really well at Canterbury at Belmore. You know, this is a club that's been to Helen back, and... You know, Gus didn't have a magic wand last year, and so people's patience is wearing thin. I saw some encouraging signs in the doubleheader at Belmore last weekend, and I think with Kickow coming to the club, that gives them so much potency. He's arguably, you know, he's one of our best players in the game. He's a Fijian, you know. He, 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 he is an amazing player, and he's going to be sorely lost to Penrith, and I'll come to that in a minute. I think Canterbury will be the big improvers in the competition, and I believe that the Bulldogs, who finished, what, 12th last year, I think they'll get to eighth position. What? I can make in the eight. Absolutely. Yeah, I tell you, you better be saving some eggs and some chocolate eggs for the Warriors if you're sitting doggies at eight. Shocks. The shocks. Cronulla. Mate, they don't have kick... Hey, listen... Marty, the Warriors don't have anyone like Kikau. Okay, I'm going to call it as I see it, whether you like it or not. I'm going to tell you, all right, Cronulla then, the Sharks. Well, Cronulla's got the best player in the game by virtue of the fact that Nico Hines picked up the Dally M last year. This is a bloke that played in the Queensland Cup for my beloved Mackay Cutter some years ago and was at the crossroads of his career and his mental toughness. I can't believe the stuff that has uh, been dealt with him in his life and he's not the only one there but he is so mentally tough and so gifted I think Cronulla look I suspect they will be very much in the eight uh, they finished second last year but I don't I think there's clubs coming to get them and Penrith and I think they will finish this is my prediction in sixth position Hines obviously needs a uh, support cast around him but any team with Hines will go places. I'm making them say they're going to finish in sixth position because there's clubs coming to get them, particularly, well, I'll come to it in a minute, but certainly the Cowboys uh, come to mind. Four out of the 17 Dolphins, they're 17th. I'll finish the sentence for you right now. I'll give you the tip, they're the bottom side. 
right now. No, they're not. I'm going to I'm going to predict that they're going to come 16th. Okay. They, they 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 have a big question mark about the the, the halves at the moment, and that was certainly uh, apparent in that trial match at Redcliffe the other day. I, I, I suspect that they've got um, solid forwards with the Bromiches and uh, uh, Felice Kafusi, but they need more than that. I'm going to predict that the Dolphins aren't going to replicate my team, the Cowboys, in 95. For those people who have got a short memory or too young, Cowboys came in in 95 along with the Warriors, obviously. We didn't have the players like the Warriors. Our team, the Cowboys, finished last. I call their first game uh, and or their first win lean pickings. It was like they won a grand final. I think the Dolphins will avoid the spoon and I think they'll finish 16th. All right, the next side then, Titans, they're finishing 17th. No, not necessarily. I don't okay. think the Gold Coast will actually make the eight. But, of course, the Titans last season finished 13th. I think there'll be an improvement with the Gold Coast. I think there's signs of improvement. And Holbrook's under immense pressure. I, you know, I think uh, he he uh, has got the good people around him that he needed to. And the club, you know, with Meninga there and so forth. I think the Gold Coast, I think the Gold Coast will, um, they don't, well, they won't challenge for the eight. But I, I'm, I'm picking them to finish in 10th position. So I think the Gold Coast will have some improvement, but I'm not convinced. But I'm willing to pick them in 10th position. Jason Costo Costigan with us. We have done six so far. Storm the Antichrist. Well, last year, Christian Welch, was a, it was a write-off for him. And if, you, and if you've picked up on the news during the week, he was named club captain or first-grade captain as part of that leadership group. And, and it's Craig Bellamy's farewell season. That's what we, seemingly is the case, and he's going to you know, retire happily ever after. I think Melbourne will improve. They finished fifth last season to jog everyone's memory. And I think the combination up front with Welch and Asafa Solomona will lay a great foundation for that team despite their losses. Uh, and I'm tipping Melbourne to finish in the top four in third position. Knights, okay. Somebody's got to finish 17th. It's them. Well, I don't know if there's many people from the Steel City listening to your program today, but I've got bad news for you. And Kalen Ponga, if he plays every game, I'm going to have humble – I'll be eating humble pie. In fact, you can get a bakery that sponsors your – you can find a bakery to come on board as a sponsor, (laughs) and I'll eat humble pie, and I'll be as big as the roundabout coming into Hamilton. But what I'll say is this. I can't see them going anywhere, and I think they will finish in the basement. I expect Newcastle to finish last, and I do believe the battle for the spoon is between them and the Dolphins, but I reckon Newcastle will get the most unwanted cooking utensil in world sport. Cowboys, your mob then. Talk it up, talk it up, because that's all you're going to do. Well, I am, because no one talked them up last year, and they, including me, Marty, in all honesty, and they surprised everybody. So they're not under the flying under the radar anymore. And, and you know, Nanai, if you said to me who are the best back rowers in the competition, you've probably got to think of Nanai and Kikau. You know, if you said, name, name, name my dream World 17, Nanai is an unbelievable player. We're going to hear about Nanai. For the next decade, you know, like remember when okay, Carmelo's... It's meant to be a bloody like, sentence on each of them, mate. You're giving me a gospel here on the Cowboys. Where are they finishing? First. Bollocks, mate. What? First. 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 Mate, you know, have a look. Have a look at what happened last year. I saw uh, their first game uh, live. Uh, I saw their first game live and they down. got beaten by the Bulldog. Run they got down. beaten by the Dogs. Yeah, I'm running And if they, had a put the, if they had a beaten Canterbury... Have a look at the ladder last year. Down. They finished third. I'm writing it down. I mean, I'm writing it down. I'm going to bring this back. Eels. They're, they're going to j- jump two spots. Parramatta, they will slide. They will slide. And I think that window, the premiership window, has closed. They don't want to hear that in the Golden West. No, they don't. Moses, uh, Moses may well win a Dally M, but I can't see Parramatta winning a premiership and ending that drought that goes back to 1986, back to the glory days. I'm tipping Parramatta to finish seventh. Seventh, they're still in the eight. Panthers, then, defending champs. Are they going to win it again? They're not going to come first because your Cowboys are, but they could, can, they win the, can they win the grand final? Well, I'm going to keep you and the producer happy here, particularly after your cricket mate went over. I'm going to say that <laughs> Kikau, yeah, you heard me, yeah. Kikau and Coruscant, huge losses for Penrith, 
and I believe they'll be relegated to fourth position after finishing, with, obviously, at the top of the pile and winning back-to-back. I don't think winning three on the on the trot is on the agenda. Oh, well, it may be on the agenda, but I can't see them pulling it off. I'm, I'm tipping Penrith to finish fourth. OK, you've got four, one, two, three, four. You've got uh, six of the eight left, Rabbitohs. Well, I think South Sydney, with what I saw in their trial form, particularly at Mudgee, you know, they didn't go to Mudgee to check out the vineyards. They went there on a mission to win the charity shield yeah. and to blow some cobwebs away. And they certainly blew St George Illawarra away. Uh, and, and I think South Sydney will go places this year. The coach, obviously, in his second year in charge after studying and being understudy to Wayne Bennett with Jason Demetrio. I believe South Sydney will go up the ladder from seventh last year to second place behind the Cowboys. Okay, he's got second. That means that the Dragons are finished. No, sorry, no, because the Roo- Dragons, Roosters, Tigers to come. So we know we know who's in the eight. The Dragons then they don't make the eight, and they were a rabble. They were a rabble, and they still are a rabble. And and I wouldn't be surprised if Hook Griffin is the first coach to be hooked by his club in 2023. So St. George Illawarra, I see them sliding into a death spiral and, and you know, they're struggling. Maybe Jason Riles will pop up mid-season. Here's a bit of a bold prediction okay. that Jason Riles might pop up mid-season as the caretaker coach. You know, I mean, I don't wish uh, bad stuff for Anthony Griffin, but he's under immense, immense pressure and I don't think he's got the best players. He's, he's been dealt a tough hand here. I think St. George Illawarra will end up in 15th position. 15. They'll be lucky if they don't avoid a battle, uh, or if they do avoid a battle for the spoon. St. George Illawarra in 15th. Roosters. Well, the cheese has arrived at Bondi. Love the and cheese. I'm not sure how many people like a cheese sandwich, but you know you can probably get plenty of that now with Brandon Smith turning up. He's a world-class player, and they've got world-class players around him. And, and uh, Trent Robinson sets high standards. They, look, I think, I think they'll be thereabouts again. And I'm tipping, I'm tipping the Roosters to finish in fifth position after coming sixth last year. Okay, all right, fifth. So there's his eight. I'm going to run by the eight. West Tigers, then. They're out of the eight as well. We've got the West Tigers and Warriors to go. Well, I'm tipping the West Tigers, who finished with the spoon last year. I'm tipping them to have some improvement under Tim Sheens. I like what I saw in the trials. But to get out of the cellar and to get to the eight, that's like climbing Mount Everest. I think they'll get to 12th position. That's my prediction. Uh 12th position for the West Tigers. Coruscant will make a huge difference in terms of how they play with that direct play out of dummy half. He's world class. This is Jason's eight. He has got the Cowboys at one. He's got the Rabbits at two. He's got the Storm at three. Panthers at four. Roosters at five. Cronulla, six. Seventh is the Eels. Eighth is the Doggies. What about our Warriors then? Well, well done everybody who turned up in the Garden City. I watched most of the trial match against good the crowd. Melbourne Storm. Good crowd. And, they, and it was a good crowd, an encouraging crowd on a glorious day in Christchurch. And I'd like to see more NRL coming to New Zealand outside or south of the Bombays this year and beyond. I've always been a fan of that. And uh, the Warriors took a long time to heed that message. But forgetting that or putting that aside, I think with Walsh leaving the club, that's a huge loss to the Warriors in terms of its potency or the team's attacking uh, prowess. And, you know, people mightn't want to talk about it, but, yeah, they're going to be playing home games, which is super exciting and going back to what we call normal programming. There's exciting things happening off the field with talk of uh, Harold Matthews and junior reps teams coming in not next year, but I think uh, the year, or maybe next year, in fact, and also the year after the women's team being resurrected, which is uh, fantastic for the women's game in your country. But I don't believe the Warriors are going to go um, any way towards being a finals contender. You know, I mean, I can tell you fibs on the program today and pump people's tyres up and they can go around and say, hey, this is fantastic. Big talk, big talk. Yeah, Guess what? Right. No. I'm going to let the air out of the tyres, Marty. I'm going to let yeah. some air out of the tyres. Yeah. I can't see the Warriors improving a lot. I think they'll finish in, I'm predicting, in 14th position after, of course, they finished second last last year. Well, that's a slight improvement, but the reality is, mate, we've won six games, and I, look, I don't care what... With Sean Johnson running the cutter, I just... I, what I was actually saying to Lachlan before, 
um, we were kicking a football round here just during the news and that, and I was saying, I wonder if Sean as Johnson... You do, as you do in the studio. As, as you do in the do. studio. I was thinking, I wonder if Sean Johnson is actually spending any time after training, spending an hour on his kicking. You know, does he stay after training like Eric Cantona used well, to do and practice like Beckham used to do? Oh, but bollocks he does, mate. Well, I'm, well, listen, I'm going to stand up for Jono here, and I, for, for, for whatever reason, I never had the opportunity to call Jono, and, and it just never happened. Our, our careers, you know, in New Zealand and Australia and around the world didn't quite actually overlap at any point and, and I think he's been an amazing player but he's in the twilight of his career and I think he does do extras uh, I'm not sure whether he, he has a reduced training program because of old age or various symptoms or uh, th- things that are with, with his body because that happens Marty with old age this is a tough sport and and if you're not willing to you know be tough in rugby league I say to people there's other sports for you including rugby union <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're brilliant, mate. We look forward to catching up again next Friday. The two minutes. He's brilliant. Drill.